that um, we, t- we tend to be talking about inflation exclusively, but the reality is that dispersion of uh, uh, dispersion of volatility means dispersion across all asset classes, right? There are downstream effects to having uh, volatility go through the roof. I just mentioned a few. You have emerging markets that are going to benefit in a way that they haven't in the last decade, right? It's been one place, benign inflation and uh, persistent growth shocks. Being able to see the future ahead of you, you're going to pay, pay money to the highest growth stocks. It's cheap for you to, to, to borrow money in order to, to have that happen. When rates start going up, uncertainty gets higher. Uh, dispersion starts to happen. There's going to be big losers, big winners. Global diversification starts to help. Currencies start to go in a different way. It, it used to be U.S. dollar and everything else. Now we're starting to see much more diversification between the, the pairs. And so it's it's the the idea that multi assets tend to like and even risk parity, anything that's just not S and P five hundred or Nasdaq. Uh, did so much better than S and P and Nasdaq in the 2000s was due to the to the amount of opportunity sets that they were, and so all of a sudden you go ha- from having a tool set that is I have to buy the fangs, to an opportunity set that is much broader from within equity markets in value versus growth, you know, energy markets like these are really going to be dispersion opportunities. Um, that might save you and might give you not just an opportunity to, to, to minimize the loss of your purchasing power, but maybe even thrive during that decade, right? But it needs mm-hmm. to be a massive mindset, a, 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 a shift in mindset. And, and you have to realize now that your tool set got huge right. and you, you haven't used these, they're rusty. You have to yeah. like, relearn how to use them and, and yeah. uh, to remind yourself why you hated them and discarded them. So you probably have to go buy a few new tools again, right? Then you have to yeah. change your IPS in order to be able to add assets. So this is something, it's crazy to me, um, just talking to different committees, how they've changed their investment policy statements to never be allowed to add alternative strategies or commodities in their uh, portfolio because of their experience in the last 10 years. So there's going to have to be a major overhaul to be able to access that tool set. Um, yeah, but and, it's and going the dispersion. To be- the dispersion yeah. creates the opportunity. Of course. Right? Yeah. We, we've had one thing do really well and everything else suck. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's kind of meh. But now you've got, well, there's going to be a myriad of things that are doing well at different times. And the thing that has been so reliable and so consistent may not be that reliable and consistent. Right? So if, if you have a, a, a suite of 20 asset classes that you can invest in and they're all going to be up 15%, and they're correlated, well, there's no opportunity really for any kind of outperformance other than levering that. Whereas if you have, you know, those same 15 or 20 asset classes that have significant dispersion in their returns, now you've got some opportunity for the rebalancing um, tailwind. You've got some opportunity to position yourselves in the different asset classes. As you said, it's the return of well, active management. Well, yeah. And, and let's let's just take one step back here because I think we, this is a conversation about inflation. And when I speak with allocators, they are all contemplating what to, what solutions. There are a lot of them. The first the first thing they're doing is starting to lean towards more commodity based equities, which is you know interesting and useful. But a lot of them are thinking about these passive commodities, right? Like let's let's just do that. And I think I'm gonna kind of. We're, we talked about inflation volatility, but let's talk about the tool of commodities, right? This idea that, look, we're going to have a, a decade of inflation. Uh, and when people, you said it earlier, Mike, uh, everybody thinks about the 70s as the decade of inflation. But, you know, it wasn't a decade of inflation. It was a decade of inflation volatility. What I'm showing on the screen now is um, is in yellow. You have the commodities uh, making 650% from point to point time capsule. You know, you put it in your portfolio, wake up 10 years later, you've killed it and you've more than offset the losses in real terms that you've experienced from your equities and your bonds, which are the bottom two lines. But man, did you have to hold on for, for a huge ride, right? There's a, that is, you're, at, you're, you're certainly solving the problem of the decade, but in between the difficulty with being, with using pure commodities as your tool um, to fight against inflation is whether you'll be able to stick to it long enough to, to garner the fruits of, of your labor. And so this is the 1970s. Again, the last commodity boom cycle was a similar thing, 
from 2000 to the peak of the commodity cycle, which was February 2011, you had massive volatility. Two major bear markets, one 31% drawdown, another 60% drawdown. The drawdown in the 70s, I didn't mention, was 37%, and it took and three, years, three years. And lasted three years. Right? Yeah. So the issue, the issue <clears throat> like, how, how should we be thinking about this problem of inflation volatility? Should it be blunt instrument commodities? Or do we go back to this dispersion of opportunities and recognize that it's more than just inflation, it's more than just commodities, it's opening up the whole tool set and, and how that could benefit you, not just from a commodity, from a, uh, an inflation perspective, but from possibly even protecting you and thriving during bear markets, right?